There's many things in life you put your stocks into right now. One is Kendrick Lamar is going to drop a banger of an album. And two is invest in Swedish players at the moment. Swedish players are on fire in Europe this season. And we're going to have to see how they develop further on into their career and what impact they will bring to the Swedish national team. As we have gone away from the dark, dark times of Janne Andersson, who was an absolutely atrocious manager for the last two years. They should have sacked him after they missed the World Cup, but then they carried on, carried him for the Euro 2024 qualifiers, and they missed their first Euros since 1996. But with a new manager, Jondal Thomasson, in the rain, and with players playing at an elite level, are we seeing a new age of Swedish football being born? If you just look at some of the players that are just balling out in Europe this season, number one is, of course, the most obvious... Victor Jerkeres. It is quite stunning what Victor Jerkeres has been doing the last two seasons, or you could put three seasons with commentary and the last two seasons with Sporting. This season already, in 19 appearances, he has 24 goals. Do you know how absurd that is? And with the national team, Victor Jerkeres has nine goals in the last six games. Now, granted, they're not the toughest of opponents, but still, that's a ludicrous number. If he can keep this up, only age 26, then Sweden got a strike force for the ages. Sweden can carry on with Victor Jerkeres, Alexander Isak as a formidable partnership for the next five to ten years because that's how good they both are. You know, Sweden have had a lot of great strikers, obviously Hendrik Larsson to Zlatan Ibrahimovic, but Vitti Erkeres is making a name of himself. He didn't have the greatest start to his career. But the last two years, you cannot deny it. this dude is one of the top five strikers in the world, and he is the talisman of this new generation of Swedish players. Other obvious name is obviously Alexander Izak, who's had a frustrating career, but we know when he is fit, the dude is a baller. He might not get a lot of goals, but just his impact in the play for every team, Newcastle for the Swedish national team, is felt. If he can stay fit, Pair him next to Vita Jerkeres, I would not want to face that two-striker partnership that Sweden can build with those two guys. But there is other players in Europe that are balling out right now. Dejan Kulusevski, he didn't have a great season last year, but this year Kulusevski is performing at an elite level. But we see with Kulusevski, he gets those crucial assists to the likes of obviously James Madison over the weekend. He got two goals and one assist against Azerbaijan. He got a crucial assist against Aston Villa. If Kulusevski can keep playing at this level, playing the number 10 role behind Jerkeres and Izak and the way he's playing for Tottenham, them. Why can't Kulusevski, only 24 still, be an elite player for Sweden for many years to come? But I think the midfield is where Sweden are going to really cook for the next 10 years. Because you have players like Lukas Berwald, Yassin Ayari, Hugo Larsson. All of those three players are 21 and younger. Those dudes are going to be the three midfielders for the next 10 years. Then Kulusevski in the 10 row or out wide. Sweden, you're locked up. You're ready. This is like building furniture from Ikea. But this is going to be easy and majestic as well. You know, Yassin Ayari had to wait his time at Brighton, but when he has been playing for Brighton this season, you again see a player who's very comfortable on the ball, elite passing like he did against Liverpool. Ayari can complement very well to Jirkeres and Izak, who love to make runs in behind the defense, or then combine the play with Kulusevski, and he is going to be a pivotal role for Sweden for the next decade. Only 21 years old, love the player. Hugo Larsson, of course, at Frankfurt, a bit more of a defensive midfielder, bought for some big money from Malmo going to Frankfurt, but he's played it a very good level, only 20 years old, and ridiculous. Lukas Berval, his time will come. Only 18 years old, but the dude is one of the most talented Swedish players we have seen in recent years. The midfielder just glides on the field like he's a figure skater. So if Sweden can just keep those three players healthy and build upon those three in the midfield, pfft, that's an elite midfield right there for many years to come. And you can talk about the defense, and the defense might not be playing at an elite level this year, but gotta highlight one player. And that player is Isa Kine from Atalanta, playing in the three-back formation. He's going to slot in very well into Yondal Thomason's formation and tactical setup. And Isa Kine has just been an elite level for Atalanta from last season, now really this year, taking that next step like we've seen with so many Swedish players this year. So Isak is definitely a player to keep an eye on for many years to come. He's again only 25 years old, and the Swedish defense needs to be built around him because if I look at the other defenders, are you going to tell me Lindelof still in the year 2024? Come on. Isa Kain is now the best defender from Sweden. Then you have other players like Gudmundsen. If only Samuel Dahl could get some more minutes for AS Roma, that would be very good. He's a very talented player from Jurgarden, making the move to AS Roma. Hasn't gotten a lot of minutes. Other players you can watch out for, Sebansia Nanansi from Strasbourg, having a really good season, making the move from Malmo again to Strasbourg this year. Goals, assists, very good creative midfielder. One player who could be emerging onto the national team 
team is Hugo Bolin, who had 10 goals and 3 assists for Malmo as Malmo once again won the Allsvenskan. And he has gotten some goals and assists for the Sweden U21 team, so I think he's a player to watch out for for the years to come. So you see with Swedish players, they are on fire right now. But what has changed for Swedish players? Is it just a mentality switch? Is it just the ghost of Jan Andersen leaving the national team? Who knows what it is? Sweden went through a bit of a banter era from 2021 to 2024. They lost in the playoff against Poland. Then in the 2024 Euro qualifiers, it was a complete debacle and you just knew Jan Andersen had to leave the national team. He stepped down, Jondal Thomasen has taken over and ever since that moment happened, it's like all the Swedish players just had a switch and the light bulb went off in their heads and they're like, oh, we're gonna start playing football right now. I'm hungry, let's eat. Because you see every player from Ayari to Larsson to Kulusevski to Jerkeres, but you see the potential that this team has and you see the potential these players have. Could it just be simply that the players got tired of Jan Andersen's tactics and maybe they couldn't really develop as players? Sweden are always producing players. We're always going to compare them to Denmark. We're always going to compare them to Norway. And of course, Norway have elite world-class players like Erdogan, like Haaland. Then you see the rise of Antonio Nusa, Oscar Bob. Nordic football is definitely on the rise. And Sweden, they said, okay, cool. We might not have gotten the VIP pass two years ago or a year ago, but we got the VIP pass and we're ready to join the club. So it's very interesting. I wanna know your thoughts in the comments down below. Who has a more promising future, Sweden or Norway? But who knows what has happened to these Swedish players. But right now, you cannot deny, they are playing at a very, very good level and they're going to transmit that form from club level to the national team level. You can't take into account what they did in the Nations League because they're gonna destroy that group with Slovakia, Azerbaijan and Estonia. I mean, come on, if Sweden couldn't win that group, then liquidate the FA. But heading into the World Cup qualifiers, maybe Sweden could be a dark horse to qualify for the World Cup after missing the Euros and missing the World Cup. Because when you have a formidable attack like Jirkenes and Izak, and you have a complementary midfield like you do, and of course, the last lineup they had against Azerbaijan, the average age was 26 years old. So you can kind of see that Yondal Thomasin is going for more youth route with the lineup and the selection choice, and it's going to only continue with the emergence of Berba, Ayari, Larsson, Hugo Bolin. You're going to see a lot of these guys be more involved in the national team but is there one signifying fact that can explain the change around for Swedish players the simple answer is no they're just all playing to the potential that they have but let me know your thoughts people what do you think has switched for these Swedish players you know Kulusevski a little bit of a down year turned it around this year what has happened to Jirkeres I don't know what he's eaten because Jirkeres is just unstoppable at the moment. Do you think now with the emergence of these star players that Sweden will qualify back to the World Cup and qualify back to the Euros or is it too early for the World Cup? No doubt if these players can keep the level that they're at, we are going to see Sweden once again at a major tournament. Also, what would be your starting midfield for the Swedish national team for the next 10 years? That's an interesting debate as well that you can have in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Remember to follow me on all the socials, Twitter, Instagram, join the Discord, all those links in the description down below. But have a beautiful day. Stay safe in this crazy world. Till next time. Adios.